The 6.5 is on the road here in San Francisco. We are at RSA Conference in the Veeam Suite. This is a beautiful place. Dan, I'm glad we're here. A lot of discussions. I mean, obviously, this is a security event, but it, it's different every single year. And as the AI discussion, AI workloads uh, come out, there's more conversations than ever on the threats, but also the, the remediations. But sometimes we do forget that it's not all AI at this point. Well, these things are all tied together, right? We know the tech is proliferating very yeah. quickly. We know that the data and the volume of data is growing. We can obviously see the investment in infrastructure. And as all these things happen, yeah. you're going to see more applications, more endpoints, more devices. And if you're in the security space, if you're in that posture, you are thinking immediately yeah. as you see all these things come online, how do we secure it? Yeah, that's right. And at least we are beyond the point. Do you remember perimeter security when the... You know, we would pretend that nobody would get in. And as long as we put up uh, enough walls there, nobody would get in. But uh, the industry has matured. We're at a point now where we know that people are going to get in and they're going to have to remediate that issue. And it's very important to have a strategy to be prepared for that. And I'm excited to have Dave and Emily to talk us through this. Great to see you. First time on the 6.5. We're glad to have you. Thank yeah, you for having us. Good to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Great, great event yeah. uh, place here. I, yeah, I love it. It's a great venue. You know, San Francisco is obviously one of the big hubs of all things technology, but you just kind of, you come down here and of course you got the Moscone, but so much of yeah. the eclectic experience are these kind of suites and these experiences that come off of the yeah, main event. Exactly. Which we've spent a good amount of time on. Dave, let's start with you talking a little bit about alignment. You know, you lead strategy, your focus here at Veeam. Um, security is one of those things we've talked about this so much on the show that's like it sits somewhere between yeah. this cool next wave of technology and life insurance yeah you know and what I mean <laughs> is like people that are in the tech understand how sophisticated how exciting how interesting the convergence AI all this stuff is going on on the other side of it at the board level for instance it's always been like well how much do we have to spend on this like to like reduce our risk and it's like that much yeah. Can we do less right you're one of those companies that's really focused on helping the boards, helping leadership get on a kind of consistent view on investment and how to deal with incident. Kind of, how are you doing that? How are you creating that difficult alignment when you know that you've got to have that wide aperture, how people perceive cybersecurity? Yeah, you know, I think it, it's all in the context of what business you're in and making sure that your ability to stay in that business, right? Yeah. So to your point about, you know, something that you might want to defer, kick the can down the road, systemically underinvest in, I think we're beyond that now in part because of some of the cyber threats recently where the worst case scenario can happen to every single company. Yeah. And by the way, it can happen again the next week, right? It's not like the traditional weather patterns were in hurricane season, earthquake season, whatever the case may be. It just is now an issue every company has to face up to the eventuality of yeah. they could get compromised. So that awareness sometimes is curative, but I think it's also understanding how can we do more with the investments we've already made? You know, and that's really at what we want to do is help people maximize what they're doing to maximize their data because they're in the business of doing something else. Yeah, so I, I love these group interviews here. It's not like, I like group therapy too. No, I'm just kidding. You all right? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, but it's great to have you know the strategic arm here, but also where the rubber meets the road is in the field. Mm -hmm. And Emily, you're field CTO, and I'm curious, what are the metrics that that um, are set in place that says I have a I have a good strategy? I mean, is it as simple as yeah, we got the data back, speed? I mean. I think it's a little bit more complex than that, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is. And it also depends on who you're speaking to, right? Yeah. Because if you're speaking to your board members, they don't want to hear about speeds and feeds and what does that look like, right? Definitely they want to know, are we going to lose revenue because we had an outage? And if so, yeah. how much? So it's really forcing our technical teams to actually start thinking about what are going to be those key metrics and then how do you then turn that back into those business outcomes so that way they can voice those concerns to the board and have those items be taken more seriously. But then on a technical side, it's doing all the basics, right? So if we look at just incident response lifecycle, okay, what are we doing to prepare for yeah. how bad the damage could possibly be if we were to be hit? What are we doing around detection and analysis? How yeah. fast can we detect that? 
What does it look like for our containment eradication strategy? And then we finally get into recovery where Veeam pays, plays a big part. But if you haven't tested your backups, if you haven't guaranteed that they're viable, how long of a process is that gonna take? And then how do you roll that all up into an incident response playbook? And then afterwards, not just test it, but then go through the process of doing a postmortem to say what could we could have done to be better in order to increase our mean time to recovery or our mean time to detect or whatever it may be. So there's key metrics in there that we can look at from a technical side, but then as a business side. Is there a strategy, does that strategy apply to technical and non-technical? I mean, you talk about the board that pretty much, you know, the, the buck stops with them mm -hmm. and they're actually held accountable now for, right. uh, for cybersecurity, at least here in the U.S. Uh, and then you've got the super duper technical people, but that's a technical term, Daniel. Super, super duper. duper. Yeah. Um, is, does it change uh, based on the audience that you're communicating to? It just kind of depends, right? I mean, I sat in on our future CISO boot camp yesterday, yeah. and majority of the conversations was having that piece of information of, okay, we're all technical, you know, at heart. But when it comes to having conversations with our board, with our CEO, with our CRO, uh, we have to know how to speak their language right. and how to be able to convey to them, right? If we don't invest in infrastructure and backups and immutability and DR planning and testing, you know, this is what could possibly happen to us. This could be our impact from a brand perspective, mm. from a loss of revenue. Even for some companies, right, unfortunately, it could be just they just don't exist anymore, right? After a really bad incident that could occur. So it's yeah. having those types of conversations and being able to convey that. Yeah. Which, are, which opens the door for, for training, mm -hmm. right? Because education seems to be a gap here. You know, we sort of started talking a little bit about have they overcome the history of looking at this as sort of a, you know, worst case scenario protection plan. Yeah. And now they're, they're proactively investing. We know that, you know, they're measuring it down to revenue per second that can be lost when they're brought down, ransomware attack, yeah. whatever it is that brings them down, bringing them back up. And then, of course, the reputational damage, which is often you can't really even calculate it. It's it's ephemeral in many ways, and it can be determined over a long period of time. So, so Dave, you think about prep and training a lot, right? So how are you addressing that part? How do you address the education? How frequently, how often? in order to get your stakeholders to really understand, buy in, and make sure they're staying ahead of this curve? Yeah, the main thing is to try to take some action, get awareness before you really need to. One of the products that Emily is really key in is we actually proactively can go and do testing and make sure ahead of time that you've got an automated way to know, am I really going to be secure or not before an incident arises? Make sure that you know you're not going to suffer from configuration drift or that your plan still works. But, you know, in the past, there's been kind of a concern, do I need to bother with testing? You know, <laughs> if, a, if a disaster hasn't happened, if the incident hasn't taken place, if we haven't been compromised recently, can I go a little longer without having to go through that drill? And the short answer is no, you can't, because you have to be able to understand in advance to know what it's gonna to take to go and remediate against that. Right. I like to use the phrase, there's no such thing as a failed test, right? You learn something from that. You wanna do the learning when the stakes are lower. So it would be one of the things that we like to do in addition to being able to get people out of a situation, meaning bring good data back, is to make sure they're never in that situation in the first place. Or in the case of testing, how can we make that painless? How can we automate that? How can we even do simulated tests to show, to prove right. that you're actually going to be recoverable, that you're auditable, that you've got a runbook that can be executed, and not just executed, but maybe doesn't require the same skill to be in place, right? You can do that in an automated fashion. You know, technology, it's funny, a lot of debates for a long time, is technology perfect or imperfect, or is it really the people that, mm -hmm. that, that have the challenge. I think when it comes to uh, cybersecurity, cyber resiliency, um, there is a huge element in, in, in humans, right? And until we get to the point where, you know, we can press a button and, you know, AI is gonna do everything for us, <laughs> um, human is gonna be in the loop here. So I'm, I'm curious, what are some of the pitfalls, some of the challenges, mistakes that customers are making in incident planning uh, that, that they can learn from and, and, and get, get better at. Absolutely. So 
one of our uh, strategies for this year was actually hosting these workshop events. So we do them for different cities all across the U.S. And that's now a global program that we do called the Be Connective. It's an executive roundtable series where we invite C-level executives from large accounts to come in and do a three-hour tabletop. Mm. And the tabletop isn't focused on hands-on technology. At the end of the day, technology is the technology. You could have the best you know, recovery response time possible out there from a technology perspective. But if you have a user that doesn't know how to leverage it, sure. doesn't even know how to log in, right, then you're going to fail in your in your incident response planning. So we focus in on just what you mentioned, your people, your process, and your overall strategy. Okay. And then how do you bring everybody together to have open communication? And I've done about 20 of these so far this year across, you know, all different parts of the United States from meeting with financial services customers to large uh, enterprise customers that are in the automotive industry and oil and gas. And each one is different. You know, I had one user that shared with me, it took them over a year just to figure out whether they were going to pay or not to pay. Because to them, it was like, well, oh what gosh. would be the circumstances? Yeah. Is it, you know, possibly life and death situation? How low could the payment be? When do we bring in our insurance? What do we have from a legal standpoint? So just having those very basic conversations is taking them a, quite a while to do so. And then on the flip side, you also have some customers that experience their users that want to be heroes because they want to save the day. They don't want to have an outage. Well, maybe they rush to recovery and it ends up reinfecting their environment or causing more damage right. than what should have been. So then they're having to work through those types of scenarios as well. So those workshops have been really, really key and kind of underlying, you know, what's currently missing in your incident response planning. And for like your point, most of the time it's who are the people that we all need to have communication with? How do we communicate with right. them? Especially if we have teams or anything that's been compromised from our corporate channels. What is the out of band communications that we utilize? And then vice versa, right? How do we go through the process of executing to get from point A to point B? So those have been very successful, but we're offering and we do those with one-to-one -one customers and that usually highlights any gaps in their current strategy. Yeah, it's so, it's so funny. Things seem so straightforward, um, and but it's the storytelling. It's it's kind of making it real for people. And like mm -hmm. Dan said in the intro, I mean, is it insurance? Is it? I mean, you know, it's your. You know, you could shut down the entire hospital, right. right? Because they can't get access to their their records. You talked about life and death situations, and that's not, you know, being alarmist. That's just an absolute reality. Mm -hmm. You know, people can't get their surgeries that they need. And, and and they've got to go to all paper and it takes them too long. So that yeah, sounds like a, a very good service. Uh, I don't know if it's an add-on or something like that, but it's I, I would sign up for it for sure. Well, you two can meet after and go through it. Write a contract up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure they I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give her the credit card that doesn't work. So So we're here at RSA and and a lot of this event is also not just kind of about litigating how security has been done, but it's really about how do we move forward. The luminaries of the industry, the biggest vendors and companies are all here paying a lot of attention to kind of what do we do going forward. We know there's massive macro forces. We've got global trade wars. We've got global conflicts that are going on in every day of the week. And of course, data security and one of the big fronts, AI, and that all this is going to be fought on. So Dave, I'm just kind of curious, like, what do you sort of see in the bigger picture for how companies can prepare, how companies can plan, how to deal with kind of all the cultural um, influence that's going on right now to basically make sure that you do everything you can to mitigate, limit your risk and set yourself up for, you know, a secure business future? Yeah, you know, I think it goes back to what you said right at the top, right? At one point, security was all around perimeter security. Yeah. Like keep all the bad people out. But if that was your only strategy, right, it wasn't going to last for very long or be very effective. I think the same is true now. You have to actually come up with a plan and mechanisms to enable that that aren't dependent upon what you know today, right, that are extensible going forward. So one of the things that we worry a lot about and how to facilitate is overcoming data gravity be able to have a concept of data portability where you can be on one hyperscaler today, move data to another hyperscaler tomorrow, potentially change hypervisors, Kubernetes, physical, all of those things can be in play. You don't want the implementation 
or the location to dictate where and how you're doing business. So overcome data gravity, make sure you've got options with data portability, make sure you have a plan that can transcend whatever the current environment may be, and open yourself up for the future. You know, I like to say in, in 2020, it was okay to say you're surprised by the pandemic. Right. We don't get to play that card in IT anymore. We have to be able to support the business and whatever tomorrow's plan may be as well. <laughs> yeah, we absolutely have to accept how fast things move and that the next big change, right? We know that the disruption to disruption, those periods get shorter and shorter. So it's, you know, field leaders, it's strategy leaders that need to make sure you're building out those products. And of course, us as analysts to make sure we tell that to the world. Dave, Emily, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a lot of fun having you on the 6.5. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We really appreciate you being part of our 6.5 on the road here at RSA Conference 2025 in San Francisco. But for this episode, for Patrick Moore and myself, it is time to say goodbye. Subscribe. We'll see you all later.